WikiLeaks and Julian Assange's legal counsel, and of course, editor in chief of WikiLeaks, Kristin Kraft. I have been privileged to look into some of the arguments that will be presented in the court by Julian's defense lawyers, and it is absolutely certain in my mind. Absolutely certain. There is so. So there are some overwhelming arguments for the dismissal of this extradition request. If it was simply a case which was decided upon on the merit of the law, the laws, I wouldn't worry at all. But this is a political case. And what's at stake is not just the life of Julian Assange, who faces 175 years in prison if extradited. It is the future of journalism. That's how important it is. This is the gravest attack on journalism in a lot of times in the world. So we're going to start with a few remarks from Kristen, uh, and then we're going to go... Um, it is uh, beyond belief that someone who has acted so bravely, an organisation that has acted so bravely, uh, should be rewarded by facing extradition and 17 counts of espionage and one count of computer hacking. Uh, it beggars belief that this situation exists in the world among developed countries at this point in time. Um, I am very concerned uh, at the behaviour of the British government, um, very concerned at the behaviour of the Australian government, who appear, or well, so far, have been happy just to let uh, events run their course. Um, and I'll criticise the Australian government um, for not fighting to sta and standing up for an Australian citizen in strife uh, abroad. At the end of the day, Julian Assange is an Australian citizen. Um, he hasn't uh, been convicted of any crime. Um, and we face this uh, remarkable situation where he would be uh, sent to the US, uh, faces 18 charges, uh, could be tried in circumstances which we would all find uh, unacceptable, and then be locked away uh, for life. Um, I would. I think this, if this goes ahead, this will set a precedent that should alarm all of you in this room. Every one of you. Go to um, Andrew and George and then to Jen and then we'll kick off with questions. You know, I'm a big fan of the Trump administration, big fan of Donald Trump, big fan of Bojo. But I tell you what I'm a bigger fan of, a bigger fan of free speech and a free press. Uh, these are the fundamentals of a democracy and their values that as a conservative that I want to uphold and they are clearly under attack when it comes to the Julian Assange case. Um, you know, I even love even more sovereignty. And the fact is, Julian Assange is an Australian citizen, an Australian citizen who is facing a foreign court right now, potentially to be extradited to another foreign country. And there's a lot of Australians on the left and on the right that um, think Julian Assange is a rat bag, right? I'm a rat bag, I love rat bags, that's great. But you know what? He's our rat bag. So he should be brought home. ...and who you work for. And keep the question short, because there are many of you who would like to ask. At the end of this, this will last one... We will finally be hearing the case of the United States against Julian Assange after almost 10 years of a criminal investigation. You can expect to hear arguments about the political nature of the offence for which he's been charged and the political... and the substance the politicisation of his case. You can also expect to hear concern being raised about the free speech issues that I've just outlined for you here and the unbalanced nature of the US-UK treaty. It's important to remember that Julian faces a long legal process. His health has deteriorated significantly since 2010. He's been under some form of restriction on his liberty since 2010. These proceedings are likely to take many years and raise fundamental questions for all of you. So I think it's important that we remember what this case means, not just for Julian Assange, but for every single person in this room. That sign off on the extradition. Uh, would consider and, and...